Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Ambitious Casual. My name is Rob. We're going over the Nintendo Direct Conference of E3 2021. This is the last thing of E3. Out of the big three, PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo, we've only had Xbox Go. PlayStation is not showing up this year. I have theories that they might have a, some sort of state of play planned for July, but as of now, we only have Xbox who's gone, which knocked it out of the park. And now we had Nintendo to end it all off. To me, the Direct was okay with some, some surprises here or there. I'm not gonna say it was complete trash. That's not true. There's a lot of things for everybody here. And some of them that were kind of surprising, not gonna lie. Starting off from the top, and I don't wanna go through every single game in detail. I might skip over the ones that are just eh. But starting from the top, we get a look at our next Super Smash Bros. Ultimate character. We have one more after this one, but we got Kazuya from Tekken. Details are coming at a later date in regards to all of his you know, flow of playing. We get, did get to see a little bit of that here. They did say tune in on 628, that being the 28th of this month, for some more details of Kazuya from Tekken, which is pretty dope. It's cool to see that we have a Tekken character, King of Fighters character, and even Street Fighter characters. So there's kind of like this cool meshup that's happening all on Smash Bros, which is showing the power of that being Smash Bros. Next, we got to see that the Life is Strange collection is coming later this year, and True Colors will also be here on September 10th, coming to the Nintendo Switch. After that, we got to see a little bit of Gardens of the Galaxy, which was a very surprising thing for me to see. Only reason why is that when Gardens of the Galaxy was shown off at Square Enix Presents, it looks like a true next-gen title. In comparison to Marvel's Avengers, which honestly, in detail doesn't look all too great doesn't look like true next gen gardens of the galaxy had this kind of fine finish around it that made it look truly next gen and the fact that it was coming to the switch made me wonder okay is this kind of like our first little hint of a nintendo switch pro game but it was announced that gardens of the galaxy which will be coming to the switch on october 26 will be a cloud version of the game so whether that kind of changes your perspective on even wanting to get it or not it kind of does for me I, I probably wouldn't even play this game on the Switch at all, but the fact that it's coming out as a cloud version could be a little bit of a hindrance for some people being like, oh, never mind. I might I might wait out on that one. Uh, next, we got to see a little bit of Worms Rumble coming to June 23rd. We saw a little bit of Astria Ascending coming September 30th. Two Point Campus, which is popping up everywhere, is coming as well. We got Super Monkey Banana Mania coming October 5th. A little bit of like a pull the rug right underneath us. I saw the bananas and I thought to myself, we're getting Donkey Kong. Here we go. The next Donkey Kong that's been rumored to be working on is here. But no, it's Super Monkey Banana Mania, which is kind of remastered of all the best Super Monkey games combined. So it's a 20th, 20th anniversary coming October 5th. If you like those games, Stay tuned because they're coming very soon this year. Next, we got to see Super Mario Party Superstars. If you listen to the recent XP podcast, one of my co-hosts, Adam, on there did state that we might see something Super Mario Party related, maybe some more boards. And as a matter of fact, we are getting that. On October 29th, we're getting five classic boards from the N64 games. Looking at it right now, they look beautiful, dude. I, I, I can't wait because of the fact that Super Mario Party that we have right now. It's getting a little too long on the tooth. We've had it for way too long. We're kind of all bored with the boards, no pun intended, and we kind of want something new. And new in the sense of we're getting some classic boards revamped with 100 mini games, online play, pre-ordered today. I'm very stoked, I'm very excited because I love Mario Party. Now that we're getting some more, October 29th, I'm so stoked. This next announcement threw me off. We all know that Metroid Prime 4 is in the works right now by Retro Studios, and it kind of was restarted. So that's probably good ways away. Maybe 2023 is when we might see that. But out of nowhere, Metroid Dread has been announced for October 8th, 2021. Side-scroller, almost like classic side-scroller Metroid game. Metroid Dread was actually announced years and years ago. And the fact that we're seeing it here out of nowhere is astonishing. I, I freaked out because I love Metroid. To see that this is coming out, a very classic Metroid side scroller. It looks like you are having these particular villains that are chasing you around and you have to escape them either by utilizing certain ways of just running or camouflaging, not moving. Check out the trailer, guys. It looks super dope. I'm very excited for Metroid Dread coming out October 8th, 2021. You got to see a little bit of Just Dance 2022. We got to see a little bit of Cruising Battle coming out. Dragon Ball Z Kakarot and expansions are coming out September 24th. 
We got Mario Golf Super Rush coming out June 25th, just kind of as a reminder that it's coming out. Monster Hunter Rise 2 coming out July 9th. And then we got hit with a surprise of Warrior Wear Get It Together coming out September 10th. Two player game. I love Warrior Wear. I've only played bits and pieces of one and never really owned a full fledged Warrior Wear game, but they've always grabbed my attention just because it's just a bunch of mini games that are just complete nonsense. And so I'm very excited. WarriorWare Get It Together coming out September 10th. Shin Megami Tensei 5 coming out November 12th, 2021 this year. And then later this year, it's just a whole slew of Danganronpa. Danganronpa Decadence, Danganronpa S, Danganronpa Anniversary Editions of Trigger, Happy Havoc, Danganronpa 2 Goodbye Despair, and Danganronpa B3 Killing Harmony are all coming out later this year. There is no official dates on those at all. They're just coming out later this year. So stay tuned for more information on that. We got to see a little bit of Fatal Frame Made in a Black Water coming out later this year. If I'm mistaken, this game is a Wii U game. So nothing new here, but you can tell that they're like, oh, we did not see a good, we didn't see some good sales numbers on the Wii U. So let's kind of bring that over to the Switch and make some money off of these. Next, we got to see Doom Eternal, The Ancient Gods Part 1 is out today on Switch. Tony Hawk Pro Skater Part 1 and 2 is coming out June 25th. Strange Brigade comes out today. Mario Rabbit Sparks of Hope, which we saw at the U Ubisoft presents showcase again seeing a little bit of it today with a 2022 release date out of nowhere we get an advanced wars one and two remastered coming out december 3rd one day after my birthday very excited i've heard a lot of great things about advanced wars and by looking in the way they reimagined it again i have never played the original ones looking at it they look it looks very toyish and i love the anime art to it that it looks very kiddish it just looks really good just in regards to the style that they committed to it looks like toys fighting against each other in a very tactical Final Fantasy tactics kind of style. So I'm very excited for this game. I can't wait till it comes out December 3rd. So stay tuned for that. We got to see a little bit more of Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, some expansions that are coming soon. Wave 1 is coming out June 18th. And then we got to see a little bit more of The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword coming out July 16th. And then we have two more things left. We got to see Game & Watch Legend of Zelda November 12th coming out. I'm very excited for this because it comes out the original Legend of Zelda, The Legend of Zelda 2. And then we also get Link's Awakening coming on the Game & Watch. If you guys don't know what that is, I actually am holding up Game & Watch Mario version. I am I love this little thing. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a sucker for anything that has to do with just Nintendo. I have the NES Classic, the SNES Classic. Obviously, I have this Game & Watch right here, and they're coming out with another Game & Watch Legend of Zelda. I'm unfortunately going to get it because I'm just a sucker for anything Nintendo. They're very good with toys. And then lastly, lastly, we get to see a teaser, you can say. Not really a trailer, a teaser. For Breath of the Wild 2, they put a release date for 2022. Not an exact month or anything like that, just a release window, 2022. The way that they spoke about it doesn't make doesn't sound like they're very confident in regards to that, of that schedule that they're putting out. But I will say what we did see today, which was some actual gameplay, it looks like it takes, takes place in the world of Hyrule, but there's an added element to it. And they did note that the fact that we are including the skies of Hyrule, which makes it seem like there's a reason why they're releasing Skyward Sword the way that they are. Skyward Sword, which is technically in the whole mythos of everything in Legend of Zelda, is like the first game in the entire series. It's the one that starts it all off. And that takes place in the sky and Link coming down to Hyrule. To see this, first off, Link looks dope, dude. He's got the long flowing hair, raggedy clothes, and his arm, he lost his arm. It looks like a robotic arm that he has on. And they're not showing his face for some reason. They're really making a point to not show his face. It's almost like we're getting, and this is a dumb, this is a dumb comparison, but almost like old Matt Snake, but like a beat up Link. And I don't feel like we've ever seen that before. And you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't feel like we've seen a beat up Link that looks like it's been so many years have passed. He's at his wits end, but he's on this journey to do this one last thing. This is what it feels like. And I'm so excited for everything that they have going on. But with that, it does make me wonder of this one thing. Breath of the Wild 2, 2022. The fact that that game is not coming out this year only makes me wonder one thing. That means any game that has any reason to be a Switch Pro kind of game is all coming out in 2022, which leads me to believe that the Nintendo Switch Pro, I don't see why they will want to release that this year. If the rumors are true, they are working on it. But if anything, we might see something about that Switch Pro whether that be at the end of the year, teasing for it to be released next year in 2022, because I just don't see any reason why you should bring it out now. The 
Pokemon Legends Arceus comes out next year. Breath of the Wild 2, 2022 comes out next year. Mario Rabbids Sparks of Hope. I made a point on Twitter when I said that when you saw gameplay for that game, it looks so clean compared to any other Switch game before. Anything in regards to anything 2022 Switch game lends me to believe that those games are coming out next year because they're gonna announce and release the Nintendo Switch Pro next year. That's what I'm led to believe. At the end of the day, the Nintendo conference, it was good. I enjoyed it. The only standout for me was Metroid Dread, which looks phenomenal. I love Metroid. I can't wait to jump back into that world and play a side scroller again. And Breath of the Wild 2, which honestly is so far away. I have no reason to like be so excited because I, I, I wanna see more. We really don't even know more now than we did before. It does look like he has some sort of powers in regards to the time of reversing time. That's why the score is playing in reverse and you can see when the droplet drops and he's going up the drop in reversing time like that's exciting but again that doesn't happen until next year and again we still don't even know if it's gonna happen until next year the way that they sound makes it seem like there's a possibility that it'll also be coming out maybe in 2023 with all that being said nintendo conference ends off e3 it's okay i kind of was expecting a bit more but hey they had a little bit of something for everybody so that's my thoughts on the Nintendo Direct conference for E3 2021, guys. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of the conference. What was your favorite thing? What stood out to you? What was something that you wish you saw? Leave them down in the comments below. Like the video, subscribe, and stay tuned for some more video game news and content here on the Ambitious Casual channel. Till next time, peace out.